Deputy Eamon Ryan, please. Thank you very much, Ken Corla. Ken Corla, my leader's question is to Mial Martin. <laughs> and to Mary Lou. And to Brendan Howland. And any other leader here, Dáil Deputy, as well as to you, Taoiseach. And to myself. Taoiseach, you just said. Well, I know what. Taoiseach, you just said. Myself, in the sense we all have responsibility. Taoiseach, you said the time will come someday when you are willing to say what you want to do on climate. I am telling you, I believe that day is today. We cannot put it off any longer. And it's today because we, are in our Climate Action Committee, can see the scale of the challenge we have in front of us. We have to, under European law, publish a new plan, new national climate and energy plan, first draft by Christmas, to be agreed at the end of next year. And I think we need to know what we're going to do on carbon taxation in drafting that plan. Does anyone disagree with that? Because how can you work out all the other measures if that measure is not in place? And it's one we have control over. So I have a proposal for Miel Martin and for Mary Lou and for Brendan Howland. And to be honest, Tisha, if Fine Gael wants to abstain themselves from this issue, well, I think that would speak volumes. Let you make that decision yourself. My proposal is similar to what you've just said, that we would introduce an increase in carbon tax where every single cent would go straight back to the Irish people, a dividend whether through the social welfare system, the tax system, a cheque in the post. In the Climate Committee last week, we asked the Department of Finance Secretary General to come back to us by the 30th of November with an outline as to how that could work. The proposal I have, the question I have, is can we agree in that committee the following measure? That next year we would introduce an increase in €20 Euros in the level of carbon tax and that each subsequent year there will be a €5 Euro increase up to 2030, which would set the level at €90 Euros a tonne by that time. It gives predictability, it follows best policy advice, and critically, the money goes back to the Irish people on any increased revenue. We use the existing mechanisms of carbon tax the way we're already applying it, so there's no additional cost, there's no bureaucracy, it's relatively easy to introduce. And critically, on top of that, at the same time we do it, it would be progressive. In the analysis shows that it would see a return to those in lower incomes more significant than those in higher, because those in higher incomes tend to consume more. We would, if, it would not be, what we learned in the ESRI yesterday is that that on its own would be nowhere near enough. There's massive projects we need to do. I would love to see a start by commissioning Bordemona to do, particularly in the west and rural Ireland, southwest, northwest, a huge project of converting Irish homes from oil and gas for central heating to heat pumps Thank you, and solar panels and insulation and electrical charging points so that we save further in that approach. Time is up now, but we need please. to know what you're going to do on carbon. If the other leaders can't answer here, I hope they can answer by the 30th of November when that committee meets to consider the Department of Finance's note on the study. But that's a question we all have to answer okay, well, today, Taoiseach, thank you, not Deputy. at some time in the future. Taoiseach. I, I, I think we'll all agree that tackling climate change requires a suite of measures that must all tie in together and speak to each other. So it has to be about tax, it has to be about regulation, it also has to be about investment. And in Project Ireland 2040, we've set out a large part of the investment piece but that will only bring us about one third of the way uh, to meeting our targets for 2030. So that, that involves things like investment in renewable energy, it means taking coal out of money point in 2025, it means getting out of peat, and you'll see what's happening there uh, already. It means retrofitting homes and schools and buildings, it means electric vehicles, it means investment in public transport like Metro and Bus Connects and other projects around the country. It means big changes in agriculture, uh, a lot more forestry, for example, uh, and investment in technologies like beef, beef genomics. But tax has to be a part of it, uh, and it's an area that uh, I think we need to get right. Uh, and I'm conscious of what happened in Australia, where it failed. Uh, governments tried to bring in a carbon tax and failed, and as a result of that, they've been set back 10 or 20 years, a little bit like we were at water charges. And I see what's happening in France now, where President Macron is facing pretty massive protests for increasing taxes on fuel. Uh, and if we're going to do this, let's do it successfully and let's get it right. 
Uh, let's learn from the mistakes of other countries and the mistakes that we made in trying to introduce water charges in this country, which was the right thing to do from an environmental point of view, uh, in, in my view. Uh, so the model that um, I personally favour is what uh, Prime Minister Trudeau is pursuing in Canada. I had a chance to speak to him about it personally about two weeks ago. And their model they're, they're proposing is something very similar to what your suggestion uh, is. You set out, a, set out a trajectory for increasing carbon tax by a certain increment every year up to 2030, meeting an agreed price, perhaps something like 80 uh, euro per tonne, that's the amount suggested by the, the Climate Change Advisory Panel, but using any revenues you gain from that to go back to people in the, terms of ta in the, in the form of tax credits and welfare credits. Something which I think you're actually suggesting, which is something that, that I would be uh, well disposed to. Uh, but we need to do the numbers. Um, Mr. Donoghue and Mr. Bruton are working on that now. And the best way, and the best way, and the best way to get it done, actually, I believe, uh, would be to agree it on a cross-party basis, because that actually would take the politics out of it. Uh, because let's not, let's not be <coughs> dishonest in any way with what a carbon tax means. It does mean that it will be more expensive for you to fill your car with diesel or petrol. It will increase the cost of transport for the haulage industry. It will have impacts on agriculture. It will make it more expensive to buy electricity and gas. And the adaptions that can be made to mitigate that won't happen year one or year two or year three. Even with the best intentions, they're going to take time to, uh, to, to make happen. And for some people, it'll never be possible, uh, in many cases because of where they live. So the best way to get this done, unlike water, would be to do that on a cross-party basis, to agree to that trajectory uh, over 10 years. Uh, and I'd be up for that. Taoiseach, Deputy Ryan. Well, I take that as a yes, Taoiseach, which puts the ball back on the Fianna Fáil and Sinn Féin and Labour <laughs> side of the court, and I think that's a positive and welcome development, whether it's 80 or 90 years a time by 2030, but I, I think the way I've, I, I suggested gets it to the appropriate way to it. Taoiseach, you were speaking yesterday, just something you said yesterday in Taoiseach's questions, you said we've, um, you're confident we'll make 2030 targets. Uh, the challenge is so big. And you said, oh, we've, we've experienced we delivered the jobs action plan. But the job, that's like saying, well, we've climbed the sugar loaf, we're going to do the Mount Everest tomorrow. That's the scale of the change. It's a huge leap we have to make. And as John Fitzgerald said, we're currently going in the wrong direction rapidly. And as you yourself now admit, the development plan will not work. It will only bring us at most one third of the way. And even then, the development plan says that by 2021, we will be deep retrofitting 45,000 houses a year, which is the best, most beneficial economic way we could do of tackling this issue. Thank you, Deputy. We don't have the workers. We don't have the money in place. We have to set all this up. So I come back to my key point. The time is now. To do this new plan by Christmas, which we have to present to the European Commission, we need agreement on a whole range of complex, difficult issues. I'm glad that you seem to be agreeing what we're suggesting on the carbon tax. I put it back to the other parties that if they in committee, in that one element, and whatever other elements we can get agreement on, Thank, and we introduced uh, it, Tommy. Deputy Ryan, we introduced please. it. We introduced the exact same. Thank you very much, Taoiseach. Taoiseach. Um, I, 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 I agree that it is. It, it, it is and will be an enormous challenge to meet our 2030 targets uh, and we're starting at a pretty bad point because we didn't meet uh, our 2020 targets. Um, but I also think that the economic challenge that we faced seven, eight, nine years ago was also huge. You know, people were talking about endless austerity, that Ireland would never get out of austerity. People were talking about us defaulting on our debts. Some people were even advocating it. People were saying we'd have long-term uh, unemployment for very... People are saying we'd have long-term uh, unemployment for very long periods of time, and yet we are now in a very different place today. Full employment, a balanced books, uh, a national debt going down, and an economy that is resulting in increased living standards for huge numbers of people. So when I compare it to the action plan for jobs and the unemployment crisis, I'm acknowledging that it is a big deal, but it's a big deal and a job that can be done. Uh, and I think I don't often find leaders' questions to, 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 to move things on in policy terms, but I think perhaps it does today. Uh, and I think we're probably uh, on the same lines on what should be done uh, on carbon tax. 
Um, and, 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 you know, instead of, instead, instead, of, instead of the old politics of he said, you said, she said, uh, let's, let me now join with Eamon Ryan and ask the leaders of Fianna Fáil and Sinn Féin, will they sign up to a price for carbon in 2030? Will they agree to a trajectory to increase carbon taxes during Please. that period? And will they agree to the principle that it all be paid back in terms of tax credits and wealth? Thank you, Peter.